Hi there, I'm Tessa from Tales from Outside the Classroom, and today I'm going to talk you through my hands-on lesson I do each and every single year to introduce fractions. So essentially, we are going to create fractions bars. Now, you can purchase commercially made fractions bars, but in my opinion, they don't really do a whole lot for building understanding with kids. Whereas this lesson, you do it once and students are truly understanding fractions. So we begin with pieces of construction paper. So I tend to use um, just my nine by 12 pages. I use this as the nine um, and then I cut one inch pieces uh, because I don't cut completely precise. That last strip I kind of leave off because I want these to be as close to exactly the same size throughout as I can just to kind of help my kids um, understand that every hole is the same size. And so speaking of that is what I call this. I call it a hole. And so we talk about how this hole is going to help us understand parts of a hole and we're, that we're going to look at several different holes. Now, in this lesson, I don't work beyond fractions larger than one. However, I do cover a ton of fractions concepts, even though it's my first day introduction, because it's sort of easy in this lesson. For the purposes of this video, I'm not going to glue these strips down. But typically, students are doing this with me, and they are gluing these strips down and creating a reference poster. And we keep this reference poster on our desk or in our desk, so it's available for us throughout our fractions lessons. I'll be honest, we don't refer back to it too, too often, but when I feel like we're getting super stuck and we need some reminders of what we've talked about, it's great to pull it out because we kind of have that common understanding and vocabulary together already. So I begin with asking students to fold our hole in half. We talk about lining it up and we talk about needing to create a precise and hard seal here on this side. Um, and we talk about why it's important. So I tell the students that we are going to, when we glue, line these up um, with that half frequently. So we want to make sure, especially that first one, um, we did a good job with. So I have a class set of Sharpies. I ask students to show their partition and I use that word partition since we will be talking about partitioning shapes later in the year. And then I ask them what fraction is this piece. And every single year somebody is able to tell me one half because of their understanding of fractions um, from first and second grade. So we label this as a half and we glue it down. It is at this time that I talk about um, the vocabulary word of unit fraction, that each of these pieces um, are the same size. And so we talk about how the unit fraction tells me the size of the, um, the pieces in the whole and how every piece is the same size. So each unit is the same size. So I tend to next do a third because when we glue these down, we glue them down um, in size order. So of course a third is hard, uh, especially for the kids to do. So I talk about how we kind of just have to fold and eyeball it and see if we can get it lined up. Inevitably, I end up doing a lot of folding on this one. I try to show the kids on the overhead how this side is on that end and how this side is here. I tell them to take their time, but inevitably people need help and have a hard time. So this would be why I always also make extra because I do always end up throwing some out. So once it's folded, I tell students they can use their Sharpie to show those partitions. And then we talk about the fraction that represents each part. So I ask what is the unit fraction of each part of the whole? And typically somebody is able to tell me one third already. So we talk about, again, how the numerator, and I use that vocabulary, numerator is one, denominator is three, since there's three parts in the whole. Now I've done the gluing a couple different ways throughout the year, throughout the years. So some years I want to use the reference poster to reinforce fractions on a number line. So in that case, I often leave space between where I glue these down so we can then draw a number line just under and then partition that number line. I usually don't introduce number lines until the next week. Um, so I kind of just ask kids to leave spaces there. I find it's super helpful to connect number lines with uh, the pieces of the whole, but it's totally up to you how you would like to do it. 
So again, um, we take another piece and I ask kids to fold it in half. Then I ask them to fold it in half again and I ask them to tell me how many parts they think are in the hole now. And again, inevitably, somebody is able to tell me four because they understand that we doubled it. So we do take a second to talk about how when we had half, it was like this. And so what we did was we folded each of those halves in half or we cut each of those halves in half. And that's what gave us our four parts. So we label them. And we label them with those fractions. And then after they are glued down, it's at this time that I ask kids to talk to me about what they recognize about the denominators. So we talk about how um, the denominators get bigger as we're going on. So we talk about how the bigger the denominator, the more pieces we cut the hole into. And that tends to lead us to a comparison conversation. So I will ask, is one half larger than one fourth? Or is one fourth larger than one half? So we talk about how we know that the denominator being larger means the pieces are smaller. We try to very quickly talk about the misconception that the larger denominator means bigger pieces in this lesson because that is a common misunderstanding kids seem to just kind of hold on to. So I want to address that right away. We also talk about how two fourths are equivalent to one half. And we can tell that because of this line. And so we talk about how, because the denominator is even, I am able to kind of find that middle, cut it in half and it would line up there. When we glue these down, we are super careful to line up that middle and then those pieces on the end, which is why I always prep these in advance. I know right now they're not looking 100% precise, um, but I'm more meticulous about it when I am cutting the pieces with my students. So I skip fifths next and I tell the kids I'm gonna skip fifths because it's too hard to freehand. But I ask them then, how do they think we should make sixth? Usually somebody says in half because they've recognized the even numbers have um, a halfway point. And we talk about how that's what makes an even and an even, that there's same sides have the same amount. I prefer to have my kids not do half um, when they do six. Instead, I ask them to do thirds and then um, then six from the thirds. So again, gives us another chance. The reason I do this is because I find it harder for them to divide that half into three equal parts. And so this is the only one I ask them to think about to make six to do thirds first. Um, again, that's sort of up to you how you would like to introduce it with your kids. I have just found this works better for me and mine. So once we have this all labeled, we again revisit the vocabulary of unit fraction. We talk about comparing and we can compare the size of one sixth to the size of one fourth, one third, or one half. I also um, ask kids to compare this to another one of the fractions above. Um, so, or sorry, um, find an equivalent. So I say, um, how many sixths are equivalent to a half? And most times I'll get somebody that is able to recognize the third. And then I change it up a bit and ask how many six are equivalent to a third. Um, and that's a little trickier for them, especially because they're, right not they're not right next to each other. Um, and so I might need to do some reinforcing of showing how these end here and these end here. And that's how I know they're equivalent. So I tell the kiddos the last one we are going to make is eighth. And so I ask them how they think we should make it. So we start with two, we turn two to four, and then we turn four to eight, and then label. So as I am working on mine, I ask them to tell me what they know about that eighth in comparison to the other ones we've made. And frequently somebody is able to tell me they know that eighths are gonna be smaller. Um, sometimes somebody's able to tell me an equivalent fraction as I'm working, um, but I tend to kind of work quickly 
to get the start of the idea, perhaps only labeling this much, and then I ask them to go ahead and start working on theirs so that we don't spend too much time. So I'm going to label each of these with the unit fractions. And then we glue them down. Once all of these five are glued down, I usually just use this opportunity then to talk about um, the vocabulary and concepts we've talked about. So we talk about equivalence, we talk about partitioning, we talk about comparing, uh, we talked about a numerator and a denominator, we um, talk about the concept that a denominator gets larger when um, the pieces get smaller because the whole is cut into additional pieces. Uh, just basically so many of our fractions concepts we're able to introduce with this one lesson. And it, I find it really helps the kiddos understand when it's time for us to compare later in third grade. So I don't have to try to get them to draw pictures or things like that. They truly just understand a denominator of eight is going to be smaller pieces than a denominator of three. Um, so in third grade, numerators are the same if we have unlike denominators. So they're quickly able to identify Third, whatever the fraction is with a denominator of three is larger than eight. I hope you have found this idea helpful. Um, if you have any questions, please just leave me a comment.